invoker connection override failed. Probably you have been searching for this error and that landed you here. And I would say 99.9% .9 you have been trying to call a Power Automate flow from Power Apps, and this is the error that you get. Let me get another guess, and that is in the beginning, it was fine, so you could successfully call, but all of a sudden, you're getting this error that I can show you the entire thing on the screen here. If that's the case, I have some answers for you. We want to see why this error happens and how we can go around it and solve it. And most importantly, we want to see also how we can avoid this from happening. So let's get into it and reproduce the error and go around the problem. To show you how the problem happens, first I want to show you how to reproduce this problem because chances are that if you know how it happens, you can avoid it before it really happens. So I create a dummy flow, then I create a dummy power apps. After that, I call the flow from the power apps by pushing a button, for example. Then we make some changes in the flow to create the same error. After that, we resolve the issue. Well, at least we try. So let's go to Power Automate first. Inside Power Automate, I click on Create, and I want to create an instant flow. And this instant flow, I want to call it Dummy Flow. And of course, I pick Power Apps, and I click on Create. It is created. I just want to get a few parameters from the Power Apps. For example, let's start by two variables, variable initialize variable and this variable is going to be first name type is going to be string and i change the name before i get the value from power apps so first name and the value i would say ask in power apps so so far this flow gets the first name from power apps Another step, I initialize another variable, and this variable is going to be last name, for example. Type is going to be string, and again, I rename it to last name. The value that I want to get for it, again, it comes from Power Apps, so I click on Ask in Power Apps, and I just save it. Maybe another silly action right after that, maybe compose. And I want to concatenate the first name and last name. So I put the cursor here, I click on first name, space, add last name. So basically compose should contain the first name, space, last name as the output. So I click on save. We're good to go. I think this is just good enough to test our functionality. I go back to Power Apps and I click on Create to create a new Power Apps as Canvas form. I pick Tablet, Dummy App, and I click on Create. This Dummy App is created, and I click on Skip. Now I want to add two text boxes, for example. Let me go to Insert input, text input, and I add another text input. So one is going to be first name, the other one is going to be last name. I select this one, txt, first name, and default is going to be blank, hint, first name, and the other one is going to be no default value, txt last name and again hint is going to be last name there we go and finally i need to add a button here that when the button is pressed 
it calls the workflow. So I click on this button, I call it btn dummy call, and the text is going to be call dummy flow. There we go. Okay, let me just make it a little bit bigger. And that's it. So now if I want to call the flow from Power Apps, I just need to click on this one. I click on the action. Let me just make sure that I've saved the other one. Click on save, all good. So I go back to Power Apps and under action, I click on Power Automate. Now you can see the dummy flow here. And if I click on it, it says adding. So this adding process, some magic is happening here. And that magic includes getting the signature, all the parameters that this flow requires. So it generates a signature for this call inside Power Apps. Just keep that in mind because everything that is happening is coming from here. So I go to dummyflow.run and if I click on this one, I can enter the first name. So it's going to be txt first name dot text. And the second parameter is going to be txt last name. And finally dot text. I just close it and I save it. Okay. And I call it, for example, dummy app one. I click on save. And the app is created. Now, I go back here and let's run and test it. So I click on the run and I enter the first name, for example, my own first name and last name, and I click on call dummy flow. Did it run? Don't know. Let's go there and verify. So if I go to the run history, I have one that just ran six seconds ago. So probably that's the call. So let me give it a shot. Power Apps worked and Compose contains my first name space last name. So let's go back to our PowerPoint slide. We created the dummy flow. We created the dummy Power Apps app. And we also called the flow from Power Apps. Let's see if we can reproduce this error now. I go back to Power Automate and I go to Edit. Let me see if I make some changes here it's going to affect the flow. I click on new step and I want to create another variable. And this variable should contain the full name. I mean, first name and last name in capital. So I click on initialize variable and I call it full name. And I also rename the action. The type is going to be string and the value I need to get the compose output and convert it to uppercase. I simply click on expression and I use to upper open the bracket and I click back on this dynamic data and I pick compose output as a parameter to the to upper function. So if I click on OK, uh, now the full name should contain the uppercase full name inside it. Fantastic. I click on save and we're good to go. Let me see if I can call it again. This time I changed the first name to Ali Reza 1 and the last name to Ali Abadi 1 and I click on call dummy flow. Let me go back here and see if it works now. It did. So if I click on the second run, I can see everything is here. And if I expand the last one, you see the first name and last name. This combination is all in uppercase. So basically, we can come to the flow and change our flow without really touching the client app. So if I make changes inside flow, Power Apps is still happy. It doesn't even care what I'm doing, except for the cases that I do some specific changes. And that specific change 
is going to be adding an action like this. Let me add another action that is going to be send email. Scroll down, send email v2. Can be anything, it doesn't matter. And I want to send an email to myself. Subject is going to be someone pushed the button. And the body is going to say that person is, and I can get the full name from the variables. Okay, I click on save. My flow is still in good shape. Everything is good. I can even test it from here. I don't want to go there at the moment. Now, if I go back to my Power Automate, and let me use to this one, and I click on Call Dummy Flow. Did it work? Let's look. So I go back to the Power Automate. Again, go back here. No, it didn't. And it tells me that there is a problem with the flow's trigger. And if I click on Fix the Trigger, you see this very famous error. Fantastic. So we successfully recreated the issue. But what is the issue? The problem is happening because I've added another action here that is slightly different from the others. Send email actually is using a connection. And that connection should become part of your trigger because when you are using connections, when the user makes the call to the flow, that user should be authorized to have access to these connections and resources. And that's okay because the user who is running it has actually all this information, is authorized to use the exchange to send email. So what's the problem? Yes, I know, mail server knows, Active Directory knows, but Power Apps does not know that even that connection information is required for that call. Because when this guy was making the connection to the Power Automate flow, that connection requirement, that connection signature was not there in the definition of the trigger. Okay, so what shall we do? Simple. And as you can see, you can see this error here. And if I click on this one and say edit in the formula bar, I can click on it. And if I move my mouse cursor here, you see exactly the same error. This error can be easily resolved. What I do, I just select the entire formula, remove it. Then I pick this, the button again and I click here again and I click on Power Automate. Again, I select Dummy Flow. This time it tries to get the connection, but all of a sudden Power Apps realizes that there is a connection that it needs to look into that. Now it gets the fresh signature of that trigger. Now I can come back here and because I'm lazy, I just copy and paste the same thing here. Our syntax doesn't change, but the trigger definition inside Power Apps needs to be updated to include the requirement for this connection. So I come back here and I save it again. Happy. And let's run it. So if I click on this run, this time I call it three, three, and I click on call dummy flow. This is the one that it that just ran. And if I click on this one, you will see it ran successfully and it sent the email. Let's check the mailbox. And this is the email. I have the first name and last name in the email text. Usually when we get to this stage, I would say, folks, that was all about it. But that is not. Uh, there are cases that even from the moment that you connect the Power Automate to Flow, you get this error. And there's no way around it. And let me tell you why that's happening. Happens quite often that Flow developers, they build a Flow and they use a different trigger. For example, a push button or, for example, the Flow that is fired like an automatic flow that is fired from uh, insertion of a record or something like that, listening to an event, anything, it doesn't matter. And then they decide to change that trigger 
to the trigger that is fired by power apps. In that case, you also get this error. I don't want to say there is no way around it, but I can comfortably say there is no way that inside Microsoft Flow you can go around it. Simply because in Microsoft Flow you cannot change the code. And the Flow Designer simply gives you that, okay, if you change the trigger, probably you break the flow, but let's not even go there. So to avoid that, the best way is when you are creating a flow to be called from Power Apps, make sure right from the beginning, from the second that you create that instant flow, just make sure that flow is called from Power Apps, not any other trigger. Thank you for watching. If you haven't done it yet, please push that like button over there, and I'll see you in the next video.